Let me introduce myself. Uh, first, I'm Katie Pickard, and I am from Construct Connect. I am originally from On Center Software. We made on screen takeoff and Wicked and all those fun things. And we got gathered up with a bunch of other companies, and we are now all Construct Connect. So if you've heard of I Square Foot, Plan Swift, or CMD, CDC, Bid Clerk, Smart Bid, we're all family now. Folks are, and we're creating really cool things. So I'll show you some of the things that we're creating today. Um, but a couple of little fun facts about me. Um, I'm not from construction, but I've been doing this job for nine years, and I absolutely love construction. I've tried to bribe my way onto several construction sites to learn a thing or two, and that never went successfully, as you can imagine, OSHA would have problems with that. Um, but because of my passion in education and in estimating, I joined the ASAE Estimating um, Educational Committee this last fall and just trying to help where I can. A uh, couple other little tidbits. I collect bizarre, interesting drawings. I have a collection of them from all the clients that I've worked with over the years, including uh, the foundations of Alcatraz. So if anybody wants to know how to escape Alcatraz, I can probably look you up and show you what that looks like. Um, just lots of really neat things. Uh, I helped some of the folks working on the Freedom Tower in New York. We helped train them up. Uh, we worked with folks building Harry Potter's Wizarding World and Avatar, all those really cool things. So I love coming to work every day. I never know who I'm going to talk to and what we're going to work on, but it's, it's really exciting. Uh, at home, my second job, I got two boys, 9 and 11, uh, two guinea pigs, two cats, and an awesome husband. So who <laughs> puts up with all of us? Um, so, and Mark Fly, so if you want to say a word, uh, he's my good buddy and colleague. Okay. Yeah, um, so and I've met uh, a lot of you over the past. I've been with SmartBit for uh, over a decade before it was acquired from ConstructNet. Um, I also am an outsource estimator. I'm an estimator first. Um, I'm a sales enablement manager by day, though, uh, for ConstructNet. I handle all the general contractor products and takeoff products. And we currently have a test case of four of those. Time. So, in lots of evolution, we're, we're uh, putting ourselves in a very specific uh, spot right now to be the leaders in Recon. So, uh, we love your interaction. So, please, she's going to ask a lot of questions. Please help out and, and you'll get the best of your experience. So, um, my role at Construct Connect is I'm the director of training. And so, we have a team of about 10 people, and we spend all day every day training estimators and helping estimators kick the tires on software. Um, so, like I said, it's, it's my enormous passion. When Eric invited Mark and I to come to the Estimators Academy and asked us, what would you teach on, what would you like to share, this is the topic that came to my mind first. Because last year, every quarter, we decided to do just a general webinar for all of our clients to kind of zero in on some topics inside our programs. And we came up with four main topics. This was the first one. That we did. So you guys are going to get a slim down version of what that was. We had 954 people sign up. It was the biggest webinar we had ever done. So I thought, I think we may have struck a nerve when we're talking about working with changes in bids. So that's probably a pretty important topic to explore again and again. Um, and we had a lot of good engagement on that, and it's something that's kind of near and dear to my heart. So uh, thanks to Eric for allowing us the chance to be here to talk about it. So this is what we're going to do today. I've got some goals. Well, number one is to inspire you to push the limits of your takeoff and estimating software. Some of you were with me this morning, and I, as a trainer, I would encourage you not to settle for using 30% of the program. Every single thing in any digital program you have was built in there for a reason. It came from market research, it came from clients, you know, giving feedback, it came from all those things. All of them are meant to enhance your ability to use that program. Um, so I would encourage you to dig deep, try to learn every, every single thing you can inside your programs. And the second is to share collective experiences in navigating change. Uh, one of the ways I've learned as much as I have about construction, not having been in construction, is because I have a lot of conversations. I talk to people all the time. Um, I tell people one of my favorite weeks of the month is when we have in-house training and we fill up our office with lots of guests. I have lunch with them. My team has lunch with them, and we get to talk to them about how are things going, how's the industry, what's your favorite project you ever built. And we get lots of interesting stories, and I'll tell you in a little bit. So that's kind of where we're headed today. So this is how we're going to do this. Manage changes like a boss and stay one step ahead of chaos. That is my theme for my team. 
Hashtag one step ahead of chaos because you just never know what's coming. And if we can stay super organized uh, most of the time, then we can head off any chaos on our way. Um, I'm a huge Lego fan. That is what I can build with instructions. But it is chaotic when you look at a mess of Legos and try to come up with something stable from it, which is why I put that there. But so here's five little things that I want to talk about today in terms of managing changes. Number one, my cloud is missing its silver lining. Anybody ever had a project come to you, revised drawing, no cloud? <laughs> yes, I know most, most of you have. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. They changed or lost their minds. We're going to talk about change orders. W-I-T-I-S, I totally made that up. That's what the tarnation is this. For Texas, I can get away with that, right? Does anybody say tarnation anymore? Oh. Uh, Do-overs. Did some take off, got a lot of stuff done, and then you think, oh, crap, that was not the right thing that I took off right there, and now I gotta do it all over again. I'm gonna talk to you about what technology can do to help you out in those situations. And then choices. How do you give your clients choices and cheaper choices? Sound good? Are you ready? I'm going to ask a lot of questions today. So show of hands, how many of you have found at least five changes on revised drawings over your career that were not cloud? Okay. How about 20? I'm going to jump up. 30? Yeah. Okay. So I can keep going. This is a major, major issue. Um, so you need to know how your tools are going to help you avoid that. Um, you know, I've worked with some of my colleagues and we try to quantify what does it cost you if you miss something and I'm, we all know it comes out of the estimator's pocket, not the architect's pocket for whatever reason in fairness that is. But what does it cost you? It could be $5,000, it could be a million dollars. I talked to Angelo Castelli, he was our president of On Center at one point and he was a part of a project at one point where just because they didn't get the right documents to people and it wasn't read the right way, communication, what have you, they started building an entire wing of a project that had been changed. And they had to rip it all out and do it all over again. So, I mean, that wide variety of changes there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to um, our program. I'm gonna show you Construct Connect Takeoff. This is part of our new platform that all those businesses I mentioned before are building together. I'm gonna to show you how we deal with project changes, how we deal with drawing changes, specifically, and new, um, new plans. <clears throat> Is that 
number one down here. You can see these <coughs> different drawing iterations I have now in check boxes next to them. So I can compare any two that I want. I just line it up. Whichever two I want to see the difference in, I'll line it up. And what's happening is you're seeing two different drawings, one laid on top of the other. I'm going to try to separate them just because I'm using this mouse today. I know. But the original drawing is changed temporarily to display as if it's all printed in red. And the revised drawing is changed to look as if it's all printed in blue. When it's matched up together, where those two drawings match, it's kind of a grayish purple. And where they don't, it pops. It pops and you can see the change right away. And it doesn't matter if anybody <coughs> clouded it or, did, or didn't cloud it, because you can see what changed. So what's great about this is that you know people didn't cloud it, no problem. Clouded it and it's vague, and you have no idea what has changed, no problem. Because you're going to see that color is going to draw your eye to that space. It also does not just focus on uh, the drawing. You have no changes, general notes that changed, schedules that changed. Anything that's in the text will have updated also, because it's just looking at what is printed on that document compared to what is being. Does that make sense? So just echoing something I always say to people, when you're looking at a new software program, dig deep and find out what it can do for you for this fundamental problem. Because a lot of software programs have something like this. This is not necessarily unique to us. There are elements of this that, is, that are unique to us. I'm having problems with this mic. Woo! There are elements that are unique to just us, but a lot of people have some solution to this. So I, my encouragement to you today is to dig deep and learn what that element is. Go hunt for this tool. Go ask about it. How am I, what am I supposed to do to compare my two drawings together? Okay, any questions about this so far? I'm going to dig a little bit deeper, but has anybody used something like this before? Do the drawing have to be formatted a certain way for it to translate the little work in the software? It does not have to be formatted a certain way. Um, the program, when it loads them in, it actually converts all documents to TIFF. It uses quite a few different document types. You can look up on our uh, user guide to get a full list. But, uh, but no, and the cool thing is it lines them up for you, and it does a pretty daggone good job of it. However, these tools right up here, I got the laser pointer on, those are tools to start manipulating the overlay. So if you get one that's not the same scale, you can actually resize it. You can stretch it or you can shrink it so that it will fit the way that it's supposed to. Where if you've got a revision that's just one part of the whole page, you can stretch it or shrink it to fit. Does that help? And sometimes people change the orientation. It used to be portrait, now it's landscape. You can flip those and move it so that you can see what's different. Now these down here that I'm using, I'll show you where we got those in a second, those are revisions of an existing drawing. We have this tool way over here that says overlays. That's for what we call a coordination overlay. Anybody ever use mechanical drawings over a floor plan trying to see you know, penetration, stuff like that? You can use it for that too. And again, not necessarily unique to us. A lot of tools out there do this, so you're going to want to look for something like that. All right, so let's talk about how we get that. How does that come into this? where everything starts in the Construct Connect Takeoff platform. Um, and so when we're thinking about changes, and when we built this out with our whole group of companies, one of the big pieces of feedback we got, particularly from OnScreen and from Plant Swift, was look, I need to be able to see the changes over time of my project. And I want to preserve the results I had on the last set of drawings. I don't want to just, you know, gloss over them or update them. I want to see what my totals were at schematic design, 50%, 75, issue for construction, and so on. And so we created a program that allows you to have one project with multiple bids beneath it. 
So in on-screen, I know a lot of people will duplicate projects, they'll throw them in a folder that's the whole project, but here, the significance is that these are all part of the same project, so they all share the same pool of drawings. <coughs> you can make as many bids as you want, and you still have access to those same set of drawings, you don't have to reload them. <coughs> the other thing about this is that if you use this as a part of the ConstructConnect platform, which is kind of a, a leads generating tool, it's more than that, but if you pull a project from there, your drawings are curated, they're named, uh, they're organized by discipline, and when addendums come in, they line themselves up with their original drawing without your assistance. They just do it. So when we go to that other page where we saw overlay and we were using that, you will just come to work one day, you'll get a notification that something has changed, you'll open your drawing, and the new drawing will be pushed to the front, and you'll see your takeoff against the new drawing, just like that. So if any of you have ever struggled with getting information out to somebody on your team, making sure they're using the right drawing, making sure we're on the same page at the same time, this is the tool for you. Because it just does it for you, it's just automatic. So what does that look like? Let's take a peek. All right, let me scroll down here so you can see a little bit of that better. Um, one of, my, one of my teammates, we hired her from Turner, where she had worked for five years as an estimator. Um, and when she saw this thing, she about lost her mind because this is basically a drawing manifest. It shows every drawing that you have. It shows over here, these four columns are each a different set of drawings. And so if you use that automated piece, the program matches up the newest versions with the original, like this one right here which is the one we were just looking at a second ago. And then it tells you what the current set is made up of, so you've got that all lined up, and if you want, you can add in the issue date and all that good stuff. And you have a record of when and where you got all of those drawings. It's right at your fingertips. So when you're, <coughs> when you're looking at software, when you're looking at your solutions, <coughs> think about the fact that we are thinking about these problems too. Give your feedback to whomever you're working with and push them to help you support the changes that you see coming. You know, it's all part of the conversations that you're having with those that support the program. Because we built this the way we built it because of conversations we had with folks like you. And because of the feedback that we received from clients who were using like on-screen takeoff, where do I put my second and third revision? And we didn't have an answer for that. So we built one with the help of clients with the books off and so forth. Any questions about this piece here? Uh, yep. How many revisions do I have? Can I export this whole list of everything? Yep. So how many revisions can you have and can you export the list? You can have infinite number of revisions. God help you if you do. <laughs> but you can export this right up there at the top right. It's an export to Excel. So you can export it and preserve this in your own documentation. How would this change the way that you do things right now? What difference would it make? Essentially, gives you a narrative if you don't have one. If they give you an update instead of drawing it's about a narrative, it's probably <coughs> Yeah. And these can all be manually updated too. Yeah, go ahead. So, we had a project a few weeks ago that had. Set of drawings that the sheet number was the same and the date was the same, but all the cuts on the sheet were different. Eventually, they came out with an addendum that changed the date on the sheet, but it didn't take out, so you had two JA31s. So, how would this, this sounds pretty smart, but how would it interpret that? So the team that puts, correct me if I say this wrong, but the team that puts this together is their people. They're people who are on the other side of our business who are actually receiving those drawings and they are manually naming them, manually um, you know, matching them, what have you. So it's people who do it. So they would be able to see this has got the same name, but it's a revision, so it needs to go where it needs to go. So, so I have a set that didn't cut through you, but I can send you that. Set that you don't have and you need 
I'm going to give you two answers to that. I'm going to give you one, and then I'll have Mark give you one. <laughs> so my answer is um, you can manually update it. So we teach this in our classes all the time, how to actually just manipulate this whole page right here on your own. And you can match that up, and there are easy ways to do that. It does take more time because you're in charge of that. But we have another tool. If you, this is a part of a bigger platform. It's a standalone. But if you use the integration with what we call project intelligence, then you, you have the option of be having your plans processed. And when that means, that means essentially that they'll rename them exactly, resize them, do the whole thing for you. What's the turnaround time for something like that? They say 24 hours, but I've rarely seen where it goes that long. The team's really fast there. Um, we are incorporating some AI into it, and that will probably expand and just expedite the process a little bit. So, um, yeah, I've never seen anything. I do some pretty big projects just testing, and I've never seen it take a day. I'm not saying it won't. That's what they tell us to say. How does that work if you have like sensitive or classified plans? Like, I mean, I have, like third party, essentially, if I understood right, mm -hmm. a third party is looking at these plans. Like, how do you know that they're even qualified or have the security clearance to do that? Right. So, um, you know, the question was, what about security plans, things that are classified or um, sensitive, those kinds of things. Um, we are still working out conversations with our IT department in terms of where things are even stored in the cloud, like is, what are the security measures there. But with something like that, at this stage, I would say you load those in on your own, right? Because otherwise it's going to pass through a team of people as it gets there. But when you load it into your org, you are the only one who can see your org. Yeah. And anybody who adds that work. Yeah, and that's something that, that's evolving. Uh, when I was uh, in this market, we were able to meet all those requirements um, at that time. Uh, and they're looking at the technology that SmartMed has, because now we're all part of the same family. Mm -hmm. We have a full new job right here. And essentially put it on a little white sheet so that we're going to work the and have all the paperwork ready and put it the system. Part of it's contractual, too. We're under an NDA with you. Or we used to do SmartMed, we were under an NDA. Disclosure and everything else to cover that. Sometimes the government still would say no occasionally, but for the most part, that's well. So, so we're trying to adapt all of that here. We should have that in Great question. Immediately, you 
know, you want to beat them up a little bit, but you don't want to hurt them too bad. Um, but you want them to learn from that. They have to understand this, the initial scope first before the changes. Otherwise, it's, it's a, you know, if they're going after the changes, they don't have to scope the original concept. What, I'm going to go one step further. What factors would you tell a new estimator they have to make sure they're certain of when scope changes? Does it pertain to the work that you do? That's really good. Anybody else? Just if that's one trade or multiple. One trade or multiple? Mm -hmm. I just said it was a uh, change, but I'll get the deduct what's been taken out. Deduct what's been taken out, yeah. Don't just add, you actually have to show what's happened when you take out the thing you're not doing anymore, right? That's important, that's usually. And the price of it all. Anybody add more profit to a change order? Your profit ratio go up a little bit? <laughs> Does that depend on if it's the two hour or the three day? <laughs> That's a really interesting, um, we have front line seats on my team to see how the uh, economy is doing just by seeing what people's profit ratios are, what their percentages are, as they plug those in as defaults into their uh, into their systems. When I started, it was around three percent. I want to say almost across the board, and now it's up around eight to ten. Like life's better, you know, things are going on. There was one individual uh, I've shared this before who had a fifty percent profit, and I thought maybe you misunderstood what I said. Let me explain again what you need to put in this space. And no, the deal was he worked on really high end homes. He was a tile and stonework guy, built things like dog showers for very high profile guests. And he worked with people he didn't want to have to bother. So he just gave himself a 50% profit you know, range of cushion so that he didn't have to go back to them a million times if stuff changed when he was working on changes. And then he got repeat clients because he didn't bother anybody. He just got the work done. I thought it was really interesting. I've never, I've never seen that since. Uh, let me go back one, hold on. Not ready to move on yet. So, I want to actually show you a couple of ways you can anticipate working on change orders. In this one, I'm going to move back into on center products. Um, in I showed you how in, in Construct Next Take Off we do we did involve to have a project with multiple bids underneath. We had not built in what I'm getting ready to show you next. But this is the thing, particularly for what you said, we have the ability to add in changes but also subtract out changes and have that quantified. Not just a deletion, but have it quantified as a negative so that you track it and you see it. So and again the reason that I'm getting ready to show this to you is because I want you to know when you're out there and you're thinking about gosh there's got to be an easier way to do this. I hear that all the time. Um, there is. And we're not the only ones who've thought of that, even though, you know, of course, I love our company. We're not the only ones who are doing that. So I just, again, challenge you, whatever systems you're using, look for how to solve this problem in that space. And if it's not there, ask them to build it. Okay, so you are in takeoff mode. And then somebody comes in and says, And says um, we are going to modify your reflected ceiling plan, and we're going to move. Boy, you can't even see that on this. This is actually a color, <laughs> but that's a takeoff of an acoustical ceiling. Let's say we're going to change that bit, so we have to subtract that out, and we have to add in a different ceiling type, and we want to see how much all of that's going to cost. Maybe we want to see how much labor it's going to take. Okay? You have tools out there that can do that for you and make this super easy. And imagine if you're a brand new estimator, being able to bridge that you know, gap of understanding when you're, when you're just trying to wrap your head around how the whole system works, to have a program that just helps you with like bumper rails and bowling <laughs> to help make sure you're going to do it all right. So you pop back here to your list of bids and you add another element to it. New change order. So I'm getting ready to make a brand new bid. And I just name it with whatever the change is, whatever I want to do. And we'll say new ceiling type. Just keep it super simple. Alright, so it 
drop down, there's my bid, there's my little sub bid, my little baby bid. And what it did is it replicated all the drawings that I needed, no takeoff on them, because it's allowing you to put in only what's changing. But you have kind of a back door into the original, right up here at the top, with all the bells and whistles. So you can move back and forth between the change order and the original. Easy peasy. So this is the part we're going to change. So I'm just going to right click on that and move that over into play in my change order. All right, that little window that just popped up informs me that my tool QuickBid is synchronizing with this. QuickBid is the tool that we use that puts in assemblies, all the parts and pieces of labor and all that good stuff. So again, in terms of ease of managing changes, a lot of that work just got done for me, just while I, I moved that piece of tape off. So I'm in here working on this takeoff, um, and I need another ceiling type that I'm changing this to. So I'm going to hop back to the main bid, and I'm just going to grab this little corridor drive drywall ceiling, move it into my chamber. All right, now, watch this. Gentlemen over here, what is your name? Instructor. BJ. BJ said we got to make sure that we count in <coughs> and that's what I'm about ready to do. So I'm going to take this one right here that y'all can't hardly see. It's like a little ghost image. And I'm going to make that the driver. <coughs> All right, so now that's the drywall ceiling. And this one up here, I need to measure the fact that it's no longer going to be there. So look up there, count as negative quantity. A little subtraction. So now I'm zeroing out. I got a positive 200 or 2,998 square feet of the drywall and a negative 2,998 square feet of the other. Just like that. I'm still in takeoff right here, right? And there's a lot more work that needs to be done to sort out what that's going to mean to our bottom line. So I would then go over to quick bid. Let's show you what happened here. So, as I said, QuickBit is a spot where you're getting really detailed information, just really quick so you can kind of get a feel for that. Um, we'll open that acoustical ceiling. So, this is an assembly, just to kind of show you what.
and then you can decide, yeah, I'm going to go with that, or no, I'm not, or whatever's going to happen. The whole time you're working, you barely get that out there, but there's a running total of your bid up in the top right hand corner. And if, I'm, if this is really happening, I just check that box, and now that's added into the whole mix. Yes? Can I use the change order process for BE and making or anything else like that? Yes. Use this for phasing and a variety of other things. Yeah, there's no, I mean, it's called change order. The other piece is alternates, which essentially works exactly the same way, with the exception of how it treats uh, material prices and labor. So if you change, if you use an alternate, it has the same kind of functionality, but if you change the material price, it will change to the main bid too, because you're still pre, you know, you're still pre construction. But the change order, if you change uh, the pricing, it only it stays in. Yeah, we have a variety of different databases for um, different trades, but we also partner with a lot of different manufacturers like Armstrong, Insert uh, USG, a variety of different folks, and they give us their assemblies of their So, you know, when we talk about changes, again, just as someone who's educated, thousands of different estimators on how to put their bids together and how to really take advantage of these tools, push back in whatever tool you're using to find a way to make these kinds of things happen. Because we are developing, and we, meaning collective we, are developing solutions to change problems all the time. And not all of them are always immediately evident. I said this in my earlier session that the developers you know, challenge every day when they're creating new software is not just to come up with new cool stuff to put in the program, but it's to make the new cool stuff really evident to you. So you'll be enticed to click on it and engage with it. And that's not always the case in here. So it's easy sometimes to pass over something that could be of enormous value to you if you had no idea it was there. Does that make sense? Now, I, I mean, I've trained clients who've been using these tools for years and didn't know that this tool was in there. Because you can't see it unless you right click and choose it. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a developer's challenge in making those kinds of things more visible and more accessible. Any questions about this piece?
stuff, it makes all that stuff a lot easier. And the way to access that is to either push back on your representative and say, look, this is, I'm struggling with this. There's got to be an easier way. Tell me if it exists in this program. And likely they will show you how to do it. You know? Or look up the user guide or look up the bit, uh, training videos that people have. But these kinds of solutions exist and it will make everything much, much simpler. Would you add anything to that? The only other thing I would add, uh, uh, John, we talked about last time when we talked about this. How many times have we get a, uh, a job done and they come up and they say, uh, can you break out just the restrooms? Mm -hmm. Can you break out uh, a lot? Can you break out the one or the So you have, you've already finished the whole takeoff. So let me let me show that. I didn't put that on my list, but it seems to fit right here. So when you are asked to break out a little specific piece of a project, you can create in this program, you can create what's called a zone. You know what zone that is. So I created a zone for a phase, but you can create it and call it whatever. It could be a concrete core schedule, anything like that. So what that allows you to do is look at your whole takeoff and go, they just want to understand how much this piece is going to be right here. And because I have now isolated everything that's covered in that blue, then everything I do in my estimated portion, I can see, I'm just going to filter this down. Every week, 
Uh, this past fall, one of the gentlemen we were sitting with was talking about changes and the struggles that they have with changes and how you have to check every single drawing up and down no matter where they are. He had a project just this last summer where the, uh, the floor plan was extended by 20 feet, but just the floor plan was extended by 20 feet. The roof was not. So I guess they were looking for a big skylight or something. Crazy stuff. <coughs> Anybody ever have any other ones that you would share? I don't know if it's strange, but it's funny. Brand new building says match existing and verified. Match existing and verified? <laughs> In someone's dreamland, apparently, where it was in existence before. What is one place here? Gosh. Um, okay, so what do you do? Um, what incarnation? What do you do with that? So I'm going to actually use our ECTO program to show you a few things in there. Um, there's some annotated tools that you can use in there that I wanted to let you know about in terms of changes and whatnot. So. Send it to clipboard, 
And I'm just going to open up a Word doc. And voila. So if I had an RFI document all squared up, ready to go, then all I'm doing is adding in the image and I write some text about what's happening and I shoot it off. So this just gives a lot of color, no pun intended, to an RFI conversation and that communication that comes with changes that are happening to make sure that you're on top of this. Does anybody have any questions or would you recommend another way to reach out to someone with changes in the drawings? So, uh, yeah, so, so think about that. So, yeah, cloud solutions somewhere, somewhere off-premises. 
purposes for disaster. Yeah, I share that story, your story, all the time. And also at On Center, three years ago, not about, we had an electrical fire. And it wasn't in our part of the building, but it could have been. And anyway, it was enough that it shut down and destroyed a transformer, I guess, that you know kept our business going. And so we all had to jump ship and go work from home for three months until they fixed it. And it was the best three months. <laughs> it was so fun. They pulled some people out and put them in rental offices in different places, but not everybody could do that. And because we're at Houston, we are a lock and ready to go team because of hurricanes. Like we have to be able to pick up and go work somewhere else at any given time. And we were able to do that. We never were not online. We kept going in. That is because all of our stuff was in the cloud. So even though we weren't in our physical office for three months, no one could tell that that had happened outside of the office. Lots to say about that for sure. Um, so mulligans do over. So um, when you're thinking about changes, there are tools built into most digital solutions that allow you a mulligan. And I don't mean the undo button. That's known to everybody, right? <laughs> undo doesn't always undo what you want it to do either. Um, what I mean is a, like a do over, like, shoot, I didn't mean to do that. Let me see if I can do that differently. So let's pick on good old on screen takeoff. The tool I'm going to show you is available at both this program and Construct Connect Takeoff. It works exactly the same way. engineering customers really looking for your advice they don't come to you with a choice they're just like I, I don't I don't know what would you do how do you how do you navigate that in the conversation or with paperwork or documents what do you do
attempt to, uh, three days before we bid to send a uh, preliminary scope letter. Okay. So that they understand, and then I would highlight or underline or whatever we call out in my email saying, please note that you've got this here, and we've assumed you need or whatever, so that they understand and they, they can, can hopefully get the rules. I can read it and then get back to me and then I'm back and make the adjustments. Response to it? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Preliminary scope letter. What is y'all's, if you have one, do you have, do you have a current process for how you do value engineering?
you've got tools that allow you to say, yeah, um, let me check on that. Let me see, where did I use that? Well, that was in this ceiling, and I open that up, and then I can see the assembly. And I can dig into the details and make sure that I'm building this the way that I want it to. That would be kind of a level one evaluation. Sort to see what's the most expensive or the least expensive. Make sure that makes sense uh, for what you're working out. And then the second piece would be, uh, let's filter this down to drywall. Yeah, let's do that. Um, and let's say that the four by 10 needs to be swapped out to something else. Let's say the four by 10s are always gonna be in a spot that they need to be moisture resistant. Just making that up. But so you would isolate that one item and we added in this little tool right here, which is so fun, to replace material where in use. Because look at this, let me back out of this for a second. If I wanted to change out everywhere that we use the four by 10 drywall, I'd have to go to one, two, three, six, eight different places and swap it out. That's it. Incredibly time consuming. Um, and it would just take an enormous amount of concentration and whatnot to do there. Not saying you don't want to go check out those places to make sure your labor is still appropriate and all those good things, but this tool allows you to go, let me just pick that material up and out and replace it with this other material all at the same time. Let me just do that and let me check out how that's going to be. And if you had, I did in this case for this particular scenario, but this can be done within a change order or an alternate, either one. So I can go uh, replace material where in use, so in all of those different items, and it tells you what you can replace it with. And it's gonna take me right to my database, which is on the other screen. So I'm gonna make And it limits the list. This is not everything that's in the database, but these are the things I can replace that last piece of material. With, you know, so it's not going to let me replace this with a piece of rebar. It knows what the item is and what I can replace it with. So then I pop through here and I would just look for my moisture resistance. There it is. X5 A drywall. Select that. And it's switching them all out. Done. So now it's X5 A MR for moisture resistant, and all of these have that moisture resistant drywall in them now. X5 A MR. Everywhere it's in use, it just swapped it out, updated my pricing, updated my labor, all the stuff that went with that one item is done. And I have a way to do that in seconds and not have to comb through, you know, mountains of detail and make sure I'm not feeling tired or distracted and all those things when we all make mistakes because we're human. This thing just cleanly does it for you and gives you a place where you can kind of do it in separate, um, isolated totals. The original bit of the Developing products, they call us and they say we want, you know, add in this 
extendable stud that you can throw into an elevator and take up to the 95th floor of this new building we're building. We want you to have that accessible to your clients. So we help them build those databases and that's accessible free for everybody. Uh, I'll show you how you get to it. And then, you know, there's no, we don't update them after the fact. You can download a new Armstrong uh, database and it will be updated whenever they decide to update it. But we don't touch your database after it's yours because you're going to be in a process of updating it to your local information. That's right. Um, yeah, so what you were saying over here, what's your name? Sada. 
Uh, so, yeah, if you're an on-screen takeoff and you decide to save your database to your C drive, that's where it's going to be. You can save it to, the, to a server. We have a lot of clients who do that, and they share servers like a SQL server, and that's where it's going to save. You should always back it up everywhere. But, um, but with the cloud, we partner with Google Cloud Servers, services, servers. They have five major server centers across North America, so your data at any given time is in like five different places. So with an act of God, we're going to call one of them, your data is still safe in four other locations. It's pretty incredible. That said, we are still talking to, to try to get kind of a white paper description of what, how those parameters work in terms of government work, sensitive information, all that good stuff. So, um, so We've gone through lots of different questions. Thank you for sharing those that you have. And I just want to implore everybody, whatever programs you're using, if you're not using anything, please use something. Please, please adopt some sort of digital solution because it really does make all of this complex um, you know, navigation so much easier. But if you are using a program, dig deep in what's in there. If there are training videos you have not watched, watch them. If there are user guide articles you haven't read, read them. If there are things that really just give you a headache and a half every week, Pick up the phone and call your representative and say, I'm struggling with this thing. Is there something you can tell me in this program that will help me, please? Because chances are, there it is. And then you walk through it and you just haven't seen it yet, which is a little bit of a failing on the development part because they haven't highlighted that tool enough that you know that to, you know, you know it to, to click on it. Does that make sense? I mean, we've all used things like Excel and Word and things, and if you've ever looked over some you know, colleague's shoulder and you're like, do that again, you know. It's easy for us to use programs for months, years even, and not know all the stuff that's in there. But I hope today was a good display of some things that you can use for changes in general. And we are not isolated. I mean, some of these things are unique to us, some of them are not. And I just want you to know this kind of technology can help you to make that.